made. This day has been made an historical one. We atone, we celebrate, we recommit. We will be heard. We will move forward from this place. The fight for full justice for all races in this country will continue. I told you I spent my first six years of school in special ed. A uh, little black boy, and they said I'd never be a damn thing. They said I'd probably never be able to read or write. But that happened to a lot of little black boys when I was growing up. It was like a place to put us. And then eventually I got to Howard University. And Ron Walters was one of the few first people I met. Ron taught me not only the book knowledge, but he told me how to touch, told me how to think and how to think big picture and how to realize that it was bigger than me. He would constantly ask me, Elijah, picture the world you want to see in five years. Picture the world you want to see in 10 years. And how can you use what you're learning to change it? Mid 60s, Tougaloo College was a hotbed of civil rights. Martin Luther King Jr. was a frequent visitor. Stokely Carmichael, Rap Brown, every major civil rights figure found solace on that campus. I cut my teeth there. The first campaign that I worked in, Fannie Lou Hamer, campaign for Congress. The seat I now hold was solely because of this lady having the nerve to run for Congress. So I basically started there and uh, I've been elected uh, pretty much ever since. When I came, I came with the idea that fools rush in where angels feel the tread. So I tried to get with the people who have been here, ask them how to move through this circle to get things. I came to get things done. I didn't care whether I was on television. I, what I cared about is whether or not I was making a difference for people back home. One of the things that the Congressional Black Caucus did over and over and over again was put the needs and concerns and the issues confronting the African American community first. So often people talk around us and don't even confront our issues. So to be associated with a group of people who are absolutely brilliant and to be able to watch them and aspire to be like them is major. And everything that has happened to me up until this moment, and to the Congressional Black Caucus up until this moment, good, bad, and ugly, prepared us for this moment. And the focus, in my judgment, and it's what I've expressed to the caucus members, in my judgment, the focus ought to be on those legislative acts for the benefit of this common community we represent. The average American think that all we do is represent African Americans. We represent people. We represent human life and conditions. We're talking about all these neighborhoods, some are rich and some are poor, that have poor environmental conditions. We want to change that. Maxine Waters says something. I said to Maxine uh, about a year ago, I said, Maxine, I get so frustrated because so many people ask what, uh, what is the Congressional Black Caucus is doing. And she looked me in the eye and she said, look, they don't understand all the things we stop from happening. Even though the public does not know exactly what you have prevented, you know that that's your responsibility, whether or not people know what you're doing or even care about what you're doing. You know it's your responsibility to avoid the constituents and the consumers of this country from getting ripped off, from getting from being undermined, uh, from being taken advantage of. And so we do an awful lot of that. And we're protecting people oftentimes in ways that they never know. We, we have many members of the Congressional Black Caucus and by virtue of the numbers, we're represented on just about every committee. And every committee can do a little something to advance the cause. Uh, but the, the, the not having 55 members also gives you a substantial vote on the floor. It'd be unlikely that any close vote uh, would not be affected by the switch in the uh, Black Caucus votes. And so we have the numbers and we have the representation on committees. And we now have the seniority with the committee chairs 
uh, to really make a difference, and it's our job to make, make that a difference. difference. As chair, uh, you make history uh, by being the first black this, but you make a difference uh, when you show how you are able to spread the wealth into the community uh, that put you here. When I'm now chair of Homeland Security, uh, when these companies come and try to convince me that they so happy that I'm chair and that when I won, uh, they told their employees, oh, he's such a fine man. I said, look, you got to show me how many African Americans you got on your board of directors. You got to show me how many African Americans you got in this C-suite. Uh, you got to show me how many minority businesses uh, you doing business with. So whatever you trying to convince me you are, uh, uh, verbally, I want you to demonstrate it. First of all, I've got to deal with the issues that confront our people on a day-to-day -day basis. And by the way, when I say pe our people, it's not just African-Americans, it's all people. Prescription drugs, uh, voting rights, uh, ACA, the uh, Affordable Care Act, all of those, we gotta tweak that and make it the best that it can be. We gotta make sure the government is not shutting down every 30 days, things of that nature. We can't have that. And, and that's another thing that I love about the Congressional Black Caucus. We get that. You, you can never tell us that you go to a grocery store and make arrangements with the grocer and he gonna work it out, your grocery bill. Like the guys in my neighborhood said, Mr. Cummins, what's up with that? So if I go to the grocer and say, I got a bag full of groceries, we'll work it out next week. They call the police on me. That's what this guy said in my community and they're right. My point is, we've got to deal with people's problems. As we continue to grow, greater expectations exist for us to do. We'd like to continue to expand because we want to make sure that there are people representing every part of the nation. Some of my colleagues were worried about these so-called new progressives who are coming to Congress. I'm tickled to death because there's all kind of stuff that we need to do, and we can't do it all. So let's let these new bloods come on. Uh, look, get us out the way. I want to be more for advice and counsel. You know, I'm tired of fighting this war every day. You get tired. You've got the Congressional Black Caucus. Can we do everything? No. Can we save everybody? No. But one thing we can do, I believe that every single member, and I mean this, of the Congressional Black Caucus, that we've got young people who want to get somewhere, we will, we will knock down buildings trying to help them get to where they got to go. You know why? because we see ourselves in them and we want to be a part of their destiny, period.